Rule seven, risk of collision. <clears throat> Every vessel shall use all available means appropriate to the prevailing circumstances and conditions to determine if risk of collision exists. If there is any doubt, such risk shall be deemed to exist. Proper use shall be made of radar equipment if fitted and operational, including long range scanning to obtain early warning of risk of collision in radar plotting or equivalent systematic observations of detected objects. Assumptions shall not be made on the basis of scanty information, especially scanty radar information. In determining if risk of collision exists, the following considerations shall be among those taken into account. Such risk shall be deemed to exist if the compass bearing of an approaching vessel does not appreciably change, and such risk may sometimes exist even when an appreciable bearing change is evident, particularly when approaching a very large vessel or a tow or when approaching a vessel at close range. So, <clears throat> this is a really interesting common sense put into words. If you have a course, you're on a heading, it's your course, and you look out the window of your, say you, look, you have a window you're looking through, and you see a vessel over there coming at you. It's a ways off, but you can see it right in that window. Three minutes later, you look, and the vessel's closer, and it's in the same part of the window. And you say, ah, oh, it's still all right. You look back a minute later, the vessel's even closer in the same part of the window. It's going to hit you in the window. Right. That is what they may mean by a constant bearing and decreasing range. That vessel's coming closer and closer and closer. So I, when you, um, <clears throat> it's interesting because... We do it so fast that you don't even think about it. You say, whoa, it's coming right for me. It didn't change in half a second. It must be coming at me. When you come on, when you're on the highway and a car comes on the on-ramp and it, it maintains that bearing and it gets closer, right away you're trying to change lanes. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of, yeah. it's cool once you learn it in <clears throat> how this book puts it, how the rules put it. Constant bearing, decreasing range. When you start to think about it like that, it gains a little bit of mm -hmm. perspective. You notice, even walking down sidewalks, well, uh, their range is decreasing. What do they mean by such risk may sometimes exist when an appreciable bearing change is evident? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so this, this is a vessel. Let's say it's a 20-footer. Well, this is a 120-footer or a thousand twenty footer right so he's got a red side light side lights they're called side lights because a lot of times they're in the stern of the vessel right, right? <clears throat> well even if an appreciable bearing change is evident particularly when at close range or a tug and a toe imagine this guy had a toe too so now we're looking at a huge vessel Right? And we're saying, oh, well, this is advancing. I'm gonna, it's going to cross ahead. Well, you might hit the stern, or you might hit the hawser, or you might hit the oh, toe. Okay. So particularly when at close range. Right. <clears throat> Risk of collision shall exist when you have a steady bearing and a decreasing range. And these are two things we'll have to get straight and that will straighten out by the end of the class. Heading and bearing, right? Our, our course, our heading, that's where we're going. But as I, as I proceed this way, each corner of the room, the bearing's changing, right? This bearing's changing, my course isn't changing, but the bearings are changing because I'm leaving them behind things like that so we need to worry about it when the bearing doesn't change headings bearings I get some people that get confused because they're so used to chart plotters that line up your headings you put in a waypoint uh -oh. and it makes your heading line up with the bearing of the waypoint which runs you into the waypoint mm 